Welcome back everyone, I am OG and today I'm doing the Land on Eve mission. I have been brave this time, unlike with my Duna mission where I chose the easiest the easiest option and just slammed a Kerbal into the planet. There we go and mission achieved! Got to Duna. Thank you for joining me everyone. You have been watching OG's channel. Um, with this one, I am choosing the Val level option, which means I will be trying to send a Kerbal all the way to Eve and return them. And this is the rocket I have chosen to do that job. It is my heavy lift rocket. This time it weighs 4,702.08 tons. And the heavy lift rocket has a lot of stuff on top of it. Unfortunately, it's a lot of parts. And I am struggling immensely just to build this thing. I wanted to go with 8x symmetry, but there was no way I was going to be able to do that. And just to demonstrate to you how poorly my processor is handling this rocket, this is me putting the rocket on the launch pad and obviously it breaks because the launch pad is too small. I had to actually launch this from a runway. But the frame rate you can see here is indicative of how well things are being handled by my computer. It was terrible to build and the more I built the worse it got because the more parts I kept adding. So after much struggling I got a rocket that worked and it spent I spent three hours testing it in the Kerbin atmosphere and there were so many disasters but eventually eventually I got to this point where I had a rocket in space I had the core booster mainly filled with fuel or filled with not nearly as much fuel as I like. It's supposed to not use any to get to orbit, but I had to. And there it sat, waiting for the mission to Eve. As you can see, it is a long, spindly noodle rocket, which made life much harder. The game does not handle tall, thin rockets very well. They are highly susceptible to what can you call it? Wobbling. No matter how many struts you give them. Be that as it may, I had to work with what I had. And so I created an Eve intercept. And I prepared my rocket for the trip to Eve. And hopefully return journey. Time warping around, getting to the position where I can start the burn away from Kerbin towards Eve. And there we go. Now, this is a planned burn, and it is planned to get an intercept with Eve. But I ran out of fuel. So then I switched to my nuclear engine. A nice efficient engine for trips between planets. And I didn't know how much fuel to pack, so I packed one big tank and one not so big tank. And I started the burn, but look at things now. I have no SAS on. And I have no more uh, maneuver, automatic maneuver, indicator maneuver, no thingies. In other words, I've, I've lost my planned burn. So I just have to go with the direction I was burning in. And then do that most favorite of OG things. Wing it. So it came down to just watching the orbital path of my rocket as the burn continued. And then trying to wing some sort of intercept on the eave side. I'm burning now with my nuclear rocket. But you can see that I'm already on half of my fuel. 
I've used up half and I'm still in orbit of Kerbin. That is a problem and as I stated in a previous video, I don't like these nuclear rockets. I think, what was it, my jewel one? They, they aren't efficient in real life. Yes, they have a brilliant ISP, but that's not all that counts. Because their fuel density is so low. So you end up with a very low fuel to rocket weight ratio. What that means is you're packing a lot of engine and very little fuel for it because it's hydrogen and it weighs nothing. Fine, you say, pack more hydrogen. But you can't because you're already struggling with a really tall rocket. And packing more hydrogen is just going to make it taller. And you can't pack the big wide tank because then you're going to have too much air resistance. So the nuclear rocket sucks. I, I don't even want to use them. I think they're terrible. Right, enough ranting. I'm now in the vicinity of EVE, at the descending node, I think, trying to correct my orbital plane so that I line up with EVE to get an intercept. And the name of the game now is Get an Intercept. But the name of the players on the opposite team of this game is You Have Limited Fuel. And I don't even manage to get into the exact orbital plane I want to be in before the nuclear rocket runs out of fuel. It's a big surprise. Horrible, horrible nuclear rocket. So now I have a problem because all of the other stages are designed for EVE itself. None of the other rockets here are supposed to be for burning to get to EVE. What I've got left now is a heat shield, and on top of that I've got a lot of SRBs. Those are designed to get me off EVE again, and then I have two more stages. One to circularize about EVE and get me going home towards Kerbin, and one for the intercepted Kerbin and get me back onto the planet. So now I have a problem. No more fuel, and I don't have an intercept yet. Well, we got rid of the horrible nuclear section. Note the time. It's taken me 179 days so far. That's fine. That's perfectly normal. Everything good so far. Just note where we are. Year zero, 197 days. And now I have to try for a free intercept. Because I can't afford to use fuel. The next thing I have on my list of things to burn are the SRBs. 17 minutes later, no intercept, I realized I was in trouble. Please note it's 68 years of game time later. So I came up with the idea of firing just two of the SRBs and I kept the heat shield on, hoping that the SRBs would sort of channel some thrust around it and now I'm trying to bring the apoapsis down to line up with EVE so that I'll have much more chances for intercept. Because at the moment I'm only intercepting EVE or at least crossing its orbit for a very small section of the EVE orbit. So bringing the Apo app down will greatly reduce my chances. But it doesn't work at all. Because the heat shield blocks all of the thrust and the Apo app doesn't move. So now I have to get rid of the heat shield. Well there goes my chance of being able to do a real EVE entry with this rocket. Because with no heat shield it would be... Let's say bad. So the realism is getting ejected here, especially since the decoupler ejects through the heat shield. Uh, that heat shield is now detached. And once again, I burn two of the SRBs. There are eight SRBs around a central large Clydesdale SRB. The idea is that these eight SRBs would have been used to lift the entire rocket off of EVE, get me through the first, let's say 10,000 meters of atmosphere, the densest stuff, after which I would have jettisoned those SRBs and fired the Clydesdale to get me up to orbit. And that was my plan to get through the EVE clouds. Use the heat shield, parachute down, just 
touch the surface so that I can say I've been on Eve and then fire those eight surrounding SRBs. Get me back towards the sky. As soon as their fuel is done, fire the Clydesdale, get back into space and use the final two stages to get home. All right, but now I've used two SRBs. However, in my calculations, I realized I only needed six. So this was still okay. I had these two to spare. That was my margin for error SRBs. So at this stage of the game, I'm still okay. As long as I can get that free intercept. And then I will use aero braking to get me onto the surface of Eve. But it didn't happen. 47 minutes of real time I tried. I burnt all the other SRBs and it's now 209 years. 209 years since I left Kerbin. Val is now 209 years old and I still don't have an intercept. So at this stage, any chance of getting home is thrown to the wind and I burn the Clydesdale because this is the closest intercept I've managed so far, about 250,000 kilometers. And yeah, I do something you should never do. I just turn my target, uh, what do you call the SAS to aim at the target and I burn straight for the target. I'm now chasing a planet through its orbit in the hope of getting an intercept. It's good for getting close to something, but it's bad for having a high delta V when you get there. However, I am now out of options. By this stage of the game, I have spent three hours testing this rocket in Kerbin's atmosphere, about an hour building it, another maybe two hours of travel to this point, going round and round in orbits. I, I am tired of this. I, I just want to get onto Eve's surface now. I'm, I don't really care about the mission so much anymore. It's now just like, get to Eve, and whatever happens, happens. Val knows she's not going home, but she's 209 years old. No one that she knows is even alive anymore. I, I don't know how she's alive. Let's say she's in stasis. So, at Periapsis, I then started a burn to create an orbit around Eve with a low periapsis. And I didn't know exactly how high the atmosphere was. So I went for a periapsis there of, you can see 68,000 meters. I know that Kerbin's atmosphere goes to about 70,000. And I figured that the Eve one would probably be about, probably be about 90,000. Um, because I think that's what it was in KSP-1. And I know it's thicker than the Kerbin atmosphere. so. I was working on 90,000 and I was actually spot on and that is exactly what it was. Beautiful as Eve is, and as correct as I may have been with my estimations, the aero braking effect at that altitude is not significant, at least on the periapsis side. It does bring the apoapsis down quite a lot, but the, apo the apoapsis was so high that that's not really what I wanted. And I would have had to do many orbits to bring it down properly. I'm trying not to burn any more fuel to bring it down because I'm trying to save every last bit for the landing or for maybe just getting off Eve again if I can. Maybe just get into space if not into orbit after the landing. I'm, I'm trying to make this rocket work as planned as I can according to the original plan. But it didn't. And I spent another 22 minutes orbiting Eve and air braking over and over and over again. I'm not showing everything that happened here. I'm not showing the many, many times I went through the atmosphere, chugging along very slowly with the processor because that is real physics calculations and you're going slowly so you can't, sorry, you're going through the atmosphere so you can't time warp faster than three times. But you know what, despite all the frustration and the agony of playing this game for at this stage probably about six hours of mission time, 
I'm still in awe of the beauty of KSB2 and scenes like this make it all worthwhile. And you know there's a patch coming out in two days time, at least from when I'm recording this. And hopefully that'll make things better. Get rid of some more glitches, get rid of a few frustrations. Slowly the game is improving. But for now, we just play it because despite all the glitches and bugs, I still love it. Even if it annoys me <laughs> too terribly at times. Hats off to the development team for what they have built. And if the patches in or the this what can I say? The fixes in patch two are half as substantial as all those in patch one. Uh, I'll be very happy because patch one was great. They did a lot of work. Okay, time to land this thing. Going down through the atmosphere. Now I've got eight parachutes. I had more parachutes on the SRBs, the drogue chutes, but obviously the SRBs are no longer with us. So all I've got are my main chutes. The speed is not too high. I'm doing about 200 meters per second. I know from my landing on Joule that parachutes don't work on other planets the same way they work on Kerbin. Not necessarily anyway. So I'm checking the parachutes. They are armed. They are ready to deploy. And all I need is for them to deploy. They're supposed to deploy at 1000 meters. There's me passing through 1000 meters. No parachutes. Big panic. I fire the top stage off. I try to turn it around, but there is no time, no space. Sorry, Val, 209 years for nothing. Uh, but that was just a simulator. That was simulating Val's actually still in orbit at this stage. So with that simulation, I'm definitely not clicking load game there. With the simulation out of the way, we decided to do something a little differently. I altered all of the parachutes to deploy at the maximum altitude of 5,000 meters. And I also set them to deploy when things are risky as opposed to safe to improve the chances of them actually deploying at all. And since we weren't going to make it home anyway, I burnt off some more fuel from this. I, I can't even tell you what stage it is. There's so many on this rocket. The second last stage. And what do you know, the parachutes deployed. All eight of them, looking like one. I decided to touch down as gently as possible to save the rocket, and maybe, maybe I could fly off for the upper stage later. I'm doing seven meters per second at this stage, and I think if I can get it less than five, there's no way things will break, and it'll be good. The rocket will be in one piece. So there we go, touching down at 4.1, Slowly take the speed off. And the rocket falls over. And Val's capsule falls off. And of course, the camera focuses on the bit of the rocket without a Kerbal in it. Because that's what KSP-2 does. It hates changing to the bit of the rocket that actually has the Kerbal in it. So I had to fight with it a little bit to make that happen. And then it just happened. And obviously we're not going home. But 209 years after launch, I have Val on the surface of Eve. <sighs> Big sigh. Okay, she's stuck at the moment because she can't get out because her door is at the bottom. But that's okay. I can roll the capsule. Yeah, magic. And Val pops out. And then things took an unexpected turn. The underworld. I made it to the underworld of Eve. I really did not expect this so soon after visiting the underworld of Kerbin. And doing a video on it. Make sure you catch the Underworld of Kerbin video. That'll explain exactly what's happening here. Val visited the Underworld. 
of Eve. So I have now been to the underworld of two plants and look how pleased she is with herself. In retrospect, it's a good place for a 209 year old Kerbal to be. What's she going to go home to? Her family's not there anymore. Well, as an explorer, this is how she would have wanted to go. Her final destination being the underworld of an alien planet. So I'm calling this a success. Even if it was definitely not as planned. I mean, to do this mission as planned, you've basically got to rely on luck. Such is the nature of KSP2 at the moment. It's actually stupid to give people a mission like that at this stage of the game. But I'm very happy with this outcome. And Val is too. And so, I'd like to say from the surface of Eve, but we're not. From the underworld of Eve. From Val and myself. Thank you for joining us. We hope to see you soon. OG out.